Welcome back to Terminology Tuesday. Today we're going over invasive plant management and removal. So we've already gone over the most important aspects of invasive plant management, which are knowing how to identify the invasive plants in your region, knowing how to report those plants to prevent the spread of them, and then also planting native plants. When we're choosing plants for our yards and gardens, choosing native species. So you've identified an invasive plant in your yard and you're ready to remove it. There are different, two different main types of removing invasive species. The first is mechanical removal, and that means physically digging up or removing the plant from your yard. And there are a few tools I wanted to share with you that are my favorite means of mechanical removal. So if just hand pulling isn't enough, these are two tools that I really like for the next step up. These are both Japanese tools, a hori hori knife and a kinho, that are useful in helping to dig and remove the plant from, from the root. Um, because it's really important that you get the entire root system. This hori hori knife is really great with deep rooted plants, so you can just circle around them and then kind of pry them up. For larger shrubs or more deep-rooted plants, you're going to want a nice garden spade like this one. I like the ones with these D handles for getting a good grip in and these little steps to put your feet on so you can get this spade really deep into the soil. So if this is my plant here, what I'm going to do is make a circle, cut a circle all around the plant and get really deep in there. So I cut the entire root system and then I can pry the whole plant out of the soil. One of my favorite tools for invasive shrubs and small trees is my handy little silky saw. So any small quality hand saw is really useful for just grabbing small trees or small shrubs really quickly and easily. So when mechanical removal is not feasible, like if it's too large of a tree or too many shrubs, large shrubs, or if you want to kill the entire plant and just cutting off the top of it is not going to kill the entire plant, typically they re-sprout, then chemical removal is your best option. And I, you know, avoid using herbicides as much as possible, but I do think that they're a necessary and important tool in managing and dealing with invasive species that is often you know, necessary, like I said. So one of the herbicides that I use, um, I don't like to foliar spray herbicides. I prefer not to do that, although that is an option. I use the cut and paint method for woody shrubs with a brush and stump killer, which basically has the ingredient triclofir and herbicide, which is of course very toxic. And so you wanna use it very carefully, follow the directions carefully, and always use glove and gloves and protection. So I would wear long sleeves and use gloves, not have my dogs out while I'm doing it. And I would just pour a small amount into a little thing to hold it. And I would make a fresh cut on the tree. You could cut the entire tree, or you can cut just a section out of the tree if it's a large tree. And then I would take a little paintbrush and write, it's very important that you cut it right before you paint it because you want it to be fresh and for that vascular system of the tree to take in these er, the herbicide. And then you just paint that fresh cut with the herbicide. After you've removed the invasive species, always be aware about are there seeds on the plant? If there are seeds, you want to bag those and put them in the garbage. Or is the plant capable of rooting from a certain section of the stem, like kogan grass, for instance, a little bit of the stem at the base of the plant and it can re-root. So you don't want to just throw that in your compost pile. Some invasive plants need to be bagged and put in the garbage can, but other invasive plants can just, like trees, and shrubs can usually just be thrown into your compost pile. Obviously, these are just some very basic beginner methods to learn how to remove invasive species in your yard. But each species is different and the methods for the removal is also different. So in the caption below, I will include a lot of resources in order for you to um, be able to know uh, learn and know what method is most useful and most effective on different invasive species and a few many other methods which I didn't have time to go over but I hope this gives you a little bit 
of information and a little bit of empowerment in learning how to handle and remove invasive species in your yard.